Thanks everyone for being here. This is the community and you are in the right place today. Cause let me tell you, we have some very exciting stuff planned today and I can't wait to introduce our, our two guests for the day. We've got one guest interviewer and a guest speaker today that's gonna blow your mind with what he's been up to, the consistency he's brought to his business and what he's been able to accomplish, really awesome. One, um, we'll always like to start off with a couple quick announcements. First off, if you're just joining us or you're a guest, welcome. We are the community. We are a support and growth organization here inside EXP Realty. And if you don't know what that is, talk to the person who sent you here today. They'll break down kind of how our business model works and why it's so new and so different. Nobody else is doing what we're doing. That's cool. Um, so we'd love for you to be a part of that. Beyond that, if you're already with us, just a reminder that we have EXPCon coming up in 2024. And no, it's not too soon for you to get your tickets. And so we would love for you to be thinking about that. In fact, maybe you want to go ahead and take that expense on this tax year. So if you don't know, you can always head over to the communitycenter.com to check out, you know, what types of events are coming up and how to get the links for all those. I'm grabbing this one here so I can pop it in. But that's the link for uh, EXPCon 2024. And if, if you haven't already made those plans, be thinking about that. Um, always good to plan in advance. And plus, tickets are still discounted, I believe. So you can get in and, uh, you know, get yourself in a little cheaper. So, hey, Kiki, we saw you in there. Awesome. Thanks for sounding off and saying, hey. All right, everybody. So listen, today's going to be absolutely incredible. We brought um, Joe Yates, our one and only one of our top leaders here inside the community. And he's invited a special guest. I'm going to let him tell you all about it um, to interview and talk about production. But remember, the markets are starting to move around on us. So there's a lot of excitement right now in terms of optimism, looking bullishly at what can happen in 2024 and getting excited and hopeful about the new year. So wanted to start us off with something that's going to blast us into the new year and nobody better than Joe Yates to get us there. Hey, Joe, man, good to see you. Um, let me get you unmuted there. There we go. Um, good to see you today, man. Are you coming to us from uh, Mexico or are you back up in Oregon? I'm in the cold of Oregon, man. Oh, geez, Louise. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, I will, I'm will. i going to get out of your hair and let you introduce our uh, our guest for the day. I'll bring him up when you're ready. All right, man. Well, I am, I'm excited to have this guy on here. Um, you, you'll, you, he's never on our calls. Um, he's, he's evidently doing other stuff this time of day, typically. Um, but Steve Thomas, not everybody knows what a badass he is and how much production he puts up. Everybody knows they're on the other side of deals with him, but nobody's really knowing what his numbers are. Um, and the cool thing is I looked up his numbers for the last three years, Steve right now this year, and he, he can correct me if I, if I missed a County or something like that. But year to date right now, he's got 94 deals done. Um, that's not too damn bad. He's ranked number two in the entire MLS. And um, again, 94 deals is pretty damn good. In comparison, in 2022, um, he was number five on the MLS and he did 97 and a half deals. So Steve, uh, you know, unless he, you know, takes December off, is going to beat his last year's numbers which is pretty damn impressive in the market we're in. But I find it even more impressive that in 2021, when we all made free money, Steve was number five and he um, he did 112 deals. So he'll go over 100 deals this year and he's not going to be that far off of the booming numbers of 2021. And then you get a guy like Joe Yates, whose numbers down are, sig are significantly down and so many of us are just subjects of the market. We're, we're products of the market. And you got a guy like Steve that's just out there crushing it. Um, and one more thing, he's he's number two with 94 deals. Number 10 has 49 deals. So there's a huge disparity even in those top 10. We're not talking like the 80-20 rule with all the 1,200 of us. There's a huge disparity right there at the top. So um, anyway, just want to uh, at that point just kind of tell you that, you know, that's what a badass he is. Steve, tell us a little bit about, you know, you, how long you've been doing this and what did you, what did you do before real estate? Um, well, before I did real estate, I owned a gym um, and uh, did that for 10 years um, and uh, got a pretty good network out of that and learned how to sell personal training and gym memberships. And uh, that, and I got a, I got a network of people that really trusted me. And then I was able to 
kind of take off from there. So um, the, and I just, I got, I think I did 48 deals when I first joined, I was in with Rockwell um, real estate and uh, we did 48 the first year. And then I ended up going on my own shortly after that. Um, and uh, now I just have a very structured routine that I do every day and every day is a little bit different, but it's like the same concept. I try to make, my goal is to make 40 prospecting calls a day. Like, and I, I do that kind of differently. It's not just like cold leads, it's past clients. It's all these different things. And I have a, it's, it's kind of a, a non-negotiable for me. You know, what I, what I do is the, there's like certain things I do every day. I have to do them no matter what. And uh, you know, most of my business comes from uh, my past clients and VIPs. And I can talk about that in a little bit, but it's uh it's, I love what I do. And it's, I just, I don't break away from the boring stuff. You know, I'm like, I don't let deals just come to me. I go get them. If I can't find a deal, I'm going to not leave the office till I get a deal. You know, I will find someone that wants something. <laughs> so. I love that. It, in, in the, in the book, um, the greatest salesman in the world by Augmentino, one of the things he talks about in there is you do not end the day at a prescribed time. And, and that's what a lot of us do. You know, we, we more or less have somehow or another, we have a, we have nine to five built into our head. And if we're working before nine, good for us. I mean, and, and, but at five o'clock, we're pretty much, we have permission to be done if we want to be. But I mean, if it was like, we were back in the hunting and gathering days, you don't get to just come home at five and say, I didn't, I didn't catch a fish or I didn't kill a bear and, you know, and there's no freaking food. I mean, I love the fact that you're like going until I killed something, I'm not done. Yeah. I feel like I've, no matter what I've done in the past, I got to go kill something today. I got to go. I got my spear. I got to feed my family. I don't leave the day till I get something. I try to get two to three deals in escrow a week, um, no matter what. And that's just my goal. And I base that down to how many leads I need a week. And I base that down how many face to faces and calls I need to make every day. So I just, I'm religious about it. Dude, that the thing that everybody's going to hate about that it's is <laughs> that's the boring freaking thing everybody's been told over and over again. And, and then you're going to, you know, they're like, no, don't let it be that. I was really hoping he was going to say it was just like, you know, you know, he just hangs out on the street corner and all these people walk by and, and you know, he hands out their card and gets 100 deals. But no, it's, it's, it's the freaking grind. We're in a market right now where the, I mean, the, the buyers aren't doing anything. They break, think prices are going to go down or they don't qualify or they mentally don't like the rates or the payments they're in. The sellers don't want to sell because they don't want to leave the payment that the, the low interest rate they're in. We're all subject to this exact same thing. Um, however, for most of us, it's affecting our production. It's our excuse. It's just like, oh man, I'd be killing it if it weren't for such a tough year out there, you know? And then you got you that ruins it for all of us, excuse me there, ruins it for all of us because you just like, you took away all of our excuses. So is it just that daily grind that this, I mean, again, you're going to put up bigger numbers this year than last year. No, what I, and it's 98 deals, by the way, if you're to date, but um, <laughs> <laughs> some of them weren't on MLS. Um, but uh, the, uh, what I did in November of last year, because I was like, man, something's changing, you know? And so I just wrote down who has to sell and who has to buy or who wants to buy. And it was investors, estate sales, divorces. And I kind of concentrated on that. And so I was like, I'm just going to put my energy into this. I had a lot, I have a lot of investors and I just, I put my energy into who is going to need to buy and sell. And there's some first time home buyers, but those are kind of hard to get right now, but they're, I'm still getting them. Um, but there's nobody selling and buying. So I didn't even, I haven't even really gone after that. Um, I'm kind of prepping them. I'm still in touch with them because I know it'll come. So like, those are my later sales. You know, some of my some of my calls are designed for later, but that's what I did. I I, I focused on in my energy towards what I knew would sell. Dude, that's awesome. We're, we're the rest of us are working our database the way we always did. We're, we're we're trying to turn buyers into buyers that aren't buyers. We're trying to talk sellers into selling that don't want to sell. You got to read. This said, I'm not working with buyers or sellers. <laughs> Have you read Who Moved My Cheese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that. I made the whole team read it, and I was like, "This is what we got to do. Things are changing." So no, that's awesome, man. Um, so what do you, I mean, what are you doing as far as overcoming that stuff? You're not even having to overcome those objections because of the fact that you're, 
you're working with entirely different clients than the rest of us are trying to work with. Yeah. I mean, I still have objections, but it's, uh, you know, I think it's a good time to buy. I think when rates drop, it's going to skyrocket. And so like buy now, save yourself 50 to a hundred thousand dollars, you know? And so that's like the biggest thing I say to buyers, like date the rate, marry the house. Yeah. I, I do the same thing. Um, I When somebody sits there and tells me that they're waiting for um, rates to go down, I tell them they're waiting for prices to go up. You know, it's just like going because there's a direct correlation. So, you know, well, as soon as rates go down, I'm going to buy. OK, well, the price is going to be up. So you and you can't refi a price, you know, I mean, so, yeah, you're obviously better off to buying right now if you can actually afford to do it. What does your what does your day look like? I mean, so so you said every day looks a little bit different. Uh, take me yeah. through your take me through your week. Take us through your week. I want to know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and and God forbid Saturday, Sunday. I mean, what does what does Steve Thomas's week look like to get these numbers? So, I feel like I need like a ton of energy to do these calls because I got to go fast to make forty prospecting calls a day. Because I got also I also got showings and a whole bunch of other stuff to do. So how am I going to make forty calls in two hours? Like it's almost impossible. It feels like sometimes. So I have a very strict morning routine to kind of rev myself up. So I go th- and it's most people probably won't do this, but it's what I do and it works. I wake up at four in the morning, um, take an ice bath, and then I go. Um, and that will wake you up like 10 cups of coffee, by the way. And then uh, and then I do sauna for 15 minutes, visualize and meditate like my goals. And then I do about 30 to 45 minutes of cardio and then I lift weights and. Uh, and then I get my and then I'm kind of I am revved up at that point, like I'm excited to make the calls. I, I'm like, I'm an animal when I get after it. I'm like, I, I just can't wait to do it. Um and so that's that's how I start my morning every day. And then um, on a Monday, I have uh, I always call my leads, but I have theme days every day. So Mondays, I call my VIPs. Those are people that give me two deals a year or more. Or people that I want to give me two deals a year or more. And so I purposely make a call to I, I put them on a rotation and I call them every Monday. Um, And I call my listings every Monday and I'm looking for what I call a CCR. It's like a current client referral. Um, And so I'm, I'm trying to find referrals through listings, referrals through um, buyers. So I I do. So Mondays is a VIP day and listing day. I call all of them. Then Tuesdays I do. um, I call all of my people that are in escrow. And, um, and again, I'm looking for referrals when I do that. I call them. My staff is pretty well planned out. So they call every, they call all the people in escrow on Mondays and they get them all happy and like, Hey, you have any questions? Do you, do you need anything from us? They get them happy. And then I call them on Tuesdays and, um, and then they're, they're usually just bragging about the team at that point. And so I ask for a referral from them when they, when they're happy. Um, it's they're uh, not as happy as they used to be. People are seem to be angry these days, but <laughs> um, nothing I can do about that really. And then Wednesdays is all about leads. So I'm like, I try to do Wednesdays as this monster call day, and I do like 50 to 100 calls, but I'm still struggling to get over 40. And then Thursdays is past client day. That's a big one for me. I probably get more leads from past clients than anything. Past clients on Thursdays is my biggest day, and I call. I, I just want to touch base. I want to see if I can solve a problem for them. Like what's going on in your life? What can I do for you? And I usually do. There's usually something that they need help with that they're trying to figure out a plumbing leak. I'm like, Oh, I got a guy for you. Don't worry about it. And I call the, I usually call the plumber, set them up, say you better take care of them. And then they, they go do that. So I try to solve a problem for most of these people on the past clients. And then uh, Fridays is trying to go for whales. So it's like people that will give me 10 deals a year. So I'm literally hunting for these people. That's what, that's my theme day on Friday. That's funny. Cause I think a lot of us, we close a deal and I don't want to ask them if they have any problems. <laughs> I mean, it's like, we're, we're, we're like, going, we're hoping we never get the phone call with any problems and you're seeing no. the problem solve. Yeah. I try to, I always, that's my goal with past clients. I want to fix things for them. I want to make their life better. No, that's awesome, man. So take me, I, I, 
sometimes I want to get a hold of somebody. I feel like I'm making crap up to get a hold of them, right? I mean, just I'm just kind of going, you know, uh, you know, I I was thinking about you. No, I wasn't. I was looking at my my freaking list of past clients, which I only look at like three times a year. Um, you know, but so I I mean I'm pretty crappy at that. So I I feel inauthentic when I get a hold of them. And you're contacting all of these people. I mean, what is it? What does it sound like when you're calling, like either for a whale or when you're calling a VIP? I so mean, what's, what's it past, sound like? If I'm pal- calling a past client, there'd be two things that I would be saying. One of two things: either a, I'm inviting them to something that's going to be fun for them, that I think like an event that I'm hosting for them, and uh, I'm doing an event this Saturday, and so I called everybody and uh, invited them and was really excited for them to go and. Um, so that's easy. That's an easy call. When I call them randomly and there's nothing to plan out, I just tell them, I just straight up with them. I'm like, Hey, you're one of my favorite people. Okay. If you're going to call for me and you're a past client and I'm calling you, that means you are one of my favorites and I'm always going to call you. I'm going to call you. I'm just going to see how you're doing. I want to see if I can do anything better in your life. You know, I just want to, I just want to see how things are. I like to stay in touch with my past clients. That's what I tell them. And then, and then they're like, okay, cool. And then they, we have a great conversation. <laughs> so that's, that's usually it and if i don't want to i take them off the list right and then from that point obviously since you've said that to them one time they get kind of used to the fact that if steve thomas calls up he's that there's that dude calling again yeah and usually i can help them with something so they're usually excited about talking to me and uh you know i generally care about them i usually write down like i have there's uh have you guys done all about you forms or do you know much about that i've seen them i i don't know if everybody has so we, we do all about you forms so it's like we i try to know as much as i can about these people so like what are their kids birthdays their names like you know the what are their birthdays what are, you know, what are their hobbies their favorite things and then um that way i have something to talk about when i call them and it's like i can bring up their kid you know how's josie doing it just it touches them you know a little more than normal by kind of getting personal um, on a deeper level. Yeah. Uh, John Sellers asked a question in there. He said, um, you, do you leave messages? So if you do miss them, do you just, do you leave voicemails just kind of asking questions? I actually don't. I call them and I text them and say, Hey, give me a call real quick. Cause it's okay. when somebody texts you, Hey, give me a call. It's hard not to take, do that. That's true. So I want to talk to, I want to talk to them. You know, it's just a, it's much more impactful, I think, than a than a voicemail. So I uh, I don't do any automated stuff. It's all I'm. It's definitely doing it the hard way by physically dialing the number and calling everybody individually. So you don't you don't let yourself off by I made forty calls and I left twenty five voice messages and you know. So mm-hmm. I love it. it. It's just like again, a lot of people, you know, myself included, would be going, "Hey, I made my forty calls," you know. It's hard. I, it's like door knocking, you don't want anybody to answer. You'd rather just leave a card on the thing, you know. I mean, it's like, oh shit, somebody's there, you know. I mean, maybe I should knock quietly. Um, but you're intentional about making the contact. So that's again, it correlates with your your freaking numbers. What what year do you say you started doing this? I mean, you're put you're crushing everybody. 17. Uh, crushing everybody on this call, I'm sure, I would assume. Um, what how many years in this business? 2017 is when I started in April. So about six and a half years going on seven. Yeah. All right. And then, so you were on a team and you got, that was, that was a good start. That was, that was a good transition going, you know, with Rockwell and, yeah. you know, th- getting that, you know, experience and everything else like that. Not only a lot of people can graduate out of that and be an individual agent as quickly as you did. Were you on just on the team for a year? Is that it? Uh, about uh, four, 15 months. Okay. Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, once I did 50 deals, I was like, they're mostly my database at that point. And uh, so I just thought it made sense. You know, I think joining a team is probably the best way to start. Like you get, they teach you in a whole different way. And like, it's uh, it was very beneficial for me. Well, I, I think the cool thing about Jake's team, knowing as much as I know, is that, um, you know, it's, it's not, he, there's direction. You know, it's like, hey, this is what I'd like you to do. This is what you should be doing. If you want to be participating at the highest level, these are the things you should be doing. So there's a there is a, a big accountability factor. There's an oppor- huge opportunity there, 
but with it, there's also an accountability. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it's kind of like uh, joining. I, I look at it like a business opening up on its own. You know how it's like a 95% rate of failure when a business opens up a brand new business. I look mm-hmm. at it like it's a franchise business instead, and you got like an 85% chance of success. And so it's uh, you got the 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 map is there for you with with it and a lot of help and structure. So it's just that's and that that helped me kind of get started and kind of understand things. And then I just took it in a different direction, and created my own systems. But so what is what is your business look like? So you started off as an individual agent on a team like like, you know, everybody, you know, a lot of others. And then when you graduated off of that, you know, I always like to use that because it's kind of like the way it works out. You graduate off the team you know, or get kicked off it. Um, some people try to graduate off it when they're not ready. And, you know, that that backfires because you know, the the team is definitely the best place to be until you're ready for something else uh, for most people. But when you went out, I'm assuming you're at that point, you, it was just you, or did you know that for the volume you were doing, you needed a buyer's agent right out of the gate? What does your team look like currently? What does that structure look like? You know, it's, it's just me. Um, I don't have a buyer's agent. I have a showing assistant and uh, he basically, he'll put my signs up, lock boxes, he does, he shows properties and opens doors for me. I do all the negotiating. I do all the consultations. I show some houses too. Um, it's a, it goes, you know, we both do it, but we both work the buyers listings. So it's all me. I have a listing coordinator, but she does uh, just the paperwork side of things. Um, so it's, I don't have any buyers agents. I'd like to bring on two by next year. Um, and, uh, I just bought an office space next to my office. I have an office space that I purchased a few years ago and I'm just bought another office space. So I'm looking to, I want to bring two more agents on and I just haven't done that yet. Um, But I think I've kind of gotten to my max on, I don't know, like my team's designed to do eight to 12 deals a month and with a pretty busy life on my end. And so it's, it'd be nice to bring on a couple agents, expand that and uh, be able to, you know, just, be able to grow with through leveraging people and then and coaching them and teaching them how to do this. Right. And finding the people that are willing to do it the way you're doing yes. it. So it's just, you know, um, first of all, that's super impressive because the other people, you know, I know the guy above you, uh, number one has a little bit bigger staff than what you have running for sure. And, and then the people right behind you, there's a lot of people that have, buyer's agents and everything else like that. So you're running a pretty lean organization to be putting up the numbers that you're putting up. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's different. It's not a lot of people do this many deals as the single agent, but um, you know, it's just what I've done. And it's, I've always been a good salesman at things and, but I've, uh, I've struggled. I've just struggled taking that leap of bringing on agents. Um, I feel like it's like herding cats. So, but I, I still want to try it. <laughs> so is it just because you don't think you're going to get the quality individual or because you just, yeah. or you, the responsibility that's going to take away from what you're trying to focus on? Well, when I owned a gym, I had a ton of personal trainers that I hired all the time. And it was kind of reminds me of that. Like they salesmen kind of people, that type A personality, like D personalities, they're all kind of similar and they're, they want to be their own boss. And so it's like how to manage and structure them has been harder to me than managing like, administration like that's easy to manage they want that kind of job um hiring somebody that's you know the buyer's agent model it's just a i just haven't been sure how to manage with them and uh but i think i'm ready to do it so for, for people that you know for anybody intelligent enough to sit there and hear what you're doing and want to duplicate it which you know i mean i i'm sitting here going dude seriously just do the work, right? The, you know, DF, what is it? DTFW, <laughs> do the work, um, you know, and that's what you're doing. Um, do you, as far as the buyer's agent go, are, are they, you pay somebody, are you, you got somebody on, is everybody running on salary? Are you, are they, are the showing agent, I should, excuse me, are they like bonus? I mean, how do you, how do you work that if for somebody that's trying to like, you know, kind of duplicate what you're doing? I do everything on salary for who they're for, for right now with a bonus structure. Okay. Like if they bring deals to the table, they get, you know, they get bonuses, but it's all ran through the same, like they're, 
the it's just on salary every month they get a they get a paycheck and then they um can get bonuses with additional things okay just try to take care of them you know like i do i pay for health insurance um they got a 401k that's matching um i take them on a trip at least once a year for like four days that where we all go give them some extra cash to spend with it and and uh just spoil them as much as i can yeah that's pretty sweet um so you're, you're you're grinding for all your leads and for anybody that can uh also do a little math here which is, is as dedicated as steve usually is to his schedule um religiously doing it he uh he, he graciously took his wednesday morning that's normally on his you know call as many people as he can day and sitting here with us so one we totally appreciate that um what as far as um leads i know we chatted you know previously about um paying for leads so i mean what uh, i know you've paid for some leads what, what are you doing right now as far as outside of just the grind of the phone calls are you paying for leads through different platforms and what percentage of your business do you think that makes up if you do i think like 10 percent of my business comes from paid for leads and i do through uh it's Zillow. I pay a thousand bucks a month right now. And it's, it's okay. Like I'll probably get rid of it. Um, it's the problem with Zillow leads and cold leads is you spin your wheels with those clearings. Even when you get a lead, like they don't trust you, like a referral trusts you. You know, you get a referral that comes in. It's like a 70% closing ratio. I do the math that Zillow leads are like five to 20. And then when you get them in escrow, they take way more time because they don't trust you completely. You're like, you don't quite know you, but if they were, if you, if their mom referred them, then it's like the trust factor goes up. So when I talk to them on the phone, I'm like, Hey, I think this is what we should do. This is my recommendation. They just say, okay, that sounds great. Whereas a Zillow lead is like, or a cold lead is um, they, they have a hard time taking my answers and it just takes a lot more time. I got to sit them down. We got to talk for hours. It's just, it's a lot more time consuming. And so it's a, uh, and I don't mind doing it. I still do it, but it's a, it's just a time thing. It takes up like 10 times more time when you got cold leads. So I, that's why I put all my energy into these past clients and VIPs. Cause it's just the energy is so, the, it's just such an easier transaction, less time for the team, less time for me and everyone's happier. And so it's just a much better, much better transition. But I do that. I do some Google AdWords uh, stuff. And I think that's pretty effective. Google ads is better than Zillow, in my opinion, because when they call me, they looked at my reviews and I'm big on Google reviews. Um, so they, they look at those and they trust me right away. It's almost like a referral. So as far as cold leads go, Google ads and Google is like where it's at. In my opinion, I get great listings out of that. And it's always a state sales too, because like the people that live here usually have an agent so they're not looking up agents on google who should i work with but people that are their parents died or something they google who should i work with in southern oregon and then my name pops up with a ton of reviews and they're all 5.0 and so they're just they trust me right away they don't even call someone else half the time um so it's uh i think google is a is probably the most powerful for me it's the most powerful method of getting deals that is not from my current database that's awesome. I know I closed a couple of deals this year from people Googling me, either either for that exact situation, somebody that's, you know, trying to find out because somebody passed away and that, and then and then agents that Google and you know, agents Googled me and find me for to do deals down here and stuff like that. So it's yeah, um, that's definitely beneficial. Yeah. Um there's just so many things here. What to be able to stay that regimented, and I mean, again, I know you said, you know, you you're you just do it. A lot of us sit there and we can we you know we we can get hot for a minute, and we'll like go, oh, you know, I'm, I'm fired up this week, or maybe not even this week. I'm fired up this morning. I'm really gonna grind. Um, and you don't want to. What, what's your what's your why? I mean, how do you? And I, I know it's so like corny in a way. It's almost like we get tired of hearing that. But what makes you, I mean, do you want to be number one? Are, are you, is it an ego thing? Which is, which I actually always say that, you know, the people that are motivated by ego, a lot of the time it's, that's a huge benefit because a lot of people that aren't motivated by ego don't care where they're ranked in the whole thing. So trying to be number one, you can't, you don't usually accidentally become number one. 
Um, so what what drives you to do this every single freaking day? Well, I do hate being number two, to be honest with you, but it's uh, that isn't my why, but it probably is up there. I just, I hate being number two. I don't know why. I just like, I probably need to get therapy for this. <laughs> It's like I'm doing good, but like feel getting number two makes me feel like I failed. Um, so like I'm I got a high drive, that is an ego thing. Um, so there's uh I got problems, but um the uh but my biggest drive is I just is I I want to change like my family's patterns. You know, they're always kind of they're they've all done fine, but they've all kind of broken even they have barely enough to retire when they're 67 years old and i i wanted to change it that's awesome you know i wanted to leave something you know for my daughter sorry but my daughter has special needs you know and she She'll need help for the rest of her life. And so she's going to need a caretaker, a house. I didn't mean to get emotional, but oh, dude. Seriously. My, my why is really powerful. You know, it's like, it's my daughter. It always has been. No, I appreciate the vulnerability there. I, I'm sure we all do. Um, yeah. And I, Seen your beautiful daughter. So, you know, that's that's awesome, man. So, and again, thank you for sharing that. And I mean, how about the rest of us, right? I mean, it's like we all have things that are important to us, but do we do it every single day like he is? I mean, with that level of commitment, it's it's like I'm you talk about being number two and it frustrating you, you know, and then I hear a guy like you that's just so much more committed than me, and it just that frustrates me, you know, and it's like you're you're do giving everything you can and and trying to figure out how to get over one more. And I'm given whatever percentage I'm giving. And, you know, I need you to come over and kick my ass in the morning at four o'clock. So it's like, you know, I mean, we all need to get that level of commitment that that you have. That's it's freaking impressive, man. Yeah. Well, it's also about, you know, it's a hard uh something else. What's that? Or some say something. Sorry, I think it was an accident. Oh, so uh, something I do daily, and it because it, right now I just feel like I don't know if you all feel this way, but I feel like there's a lot of negativity out there. Like it's all you know, the buyers are emotional, the sellers are emotional, everybody's kind of unhappy, and so how do you overcome that and create something positive for them? So like, I want I want every time they talk to me that I can add something to their lives and so every morning when i'm doing my little routine every day it's i'm trying to get my head right you know i'm like trying to get like positive again because like i got beat up yesterday so like in the mornings i'm just like thinking about positive affirmations and i'm just do, going through a routine of like getting my mind healthy and strong where i can handle the day and help people just have a better life Dude, so you know what? I mean, he, he just said something there that's there's a real secret there in that he, it's easier for make him to make the call because he's making the call with the intention of bringing value. And yes, he's going to be asking for something, but he's also coming in. He's trying to help. He's trying to make people's day better and everything else like that. And whereas a lot of us, we are truly only calling to get something. I, I've given the example before when people say that, you know, they don't like cold calling or they don't like door knocking. And I said, well, it's because you're not bringing value. You're doing it for you rather than the person that you're going out there to communicate with. And so I give the example of if I gave you a stack of $50 gift cards and told you to walk down the street, and knock on doors and give them away, would that be difficult for you? And it's like, well, no, that's not difficult for me. So then it's not the door knocking and the stranger on the other side. It's that you're not bringing any, any value when you go knock on their door and you're only going there for yourself. So it makes it pretty tough if you're not bringing value, but Steve sits there within he's intentional about 
delivering the goods, man. It's just like inspiring people, making them feel better. And then he's willing to take his lumps all day long, have to patch himself up the next morning to do it again. But he knows that his heart's in the right place and he's going there bringing value. And I think all of us, we're going to have an easier time making these phone calls if we're coming from that value position. Yeah. Well, it's that the intent is funny because like my intent when I make my calls is not to get a deal. It isn't exact. It's not to get a referral. I don't have that intent and I don't, I, but the opportunity always comes because they, I'm a realtor. We talk about real estate all the time and everybody's curious about what the real estate market's doing. So they're going to bring it up. And so my intent is completely different and it's obvious. And I don't care if they give me a referral ever, but that always comes and I strike when it's there. No, when I, uh, one, one thing I, I say when I'm teaching new salespeople is I say my wallet and the client's needs are unrelated. And when I was able to make that, that, you know, that disconnection and, and quit trying to sell, I also always say, I, I never say, I hope they buy this home. I always say, I hope it's the right home. So I leave my house hoping I'm getting ready to show the right home versus hoping that they're going to buy a home because it changes my changes my heart position and I don't go there with the intent. If I'm going there hoping that they're going to buy, then I'm going there with the intent to sell. And if I'm going there as a salesman, we're adversaries to a degree because they're going to see that I'm trying to sell them something. But if I go there hoping it's the right home, then I'm going there locked arm in arm with them in expectation and hoping the same thing that they're hoping. And we go, and then we, you know, to our surprise, it's wonderful. And then I explain to them, it's the home that they've been, you know, describing to me. But at the same time, I, I like that, that you're not going there. You're ma not making the calls necessarily with the intent to sell. It's mm -hmm. the, it's that heart position and the value you're bringing that lets people's guards down and they just want to, you know, they're going to send you business anyway. Yep. And they're going to ask me about it. They're going to ask me about business and I'll ask them. I'll be like, hey, you thought about investing into a duplex or something? Like, you know, the right now I'm getting crazy deals for people. So I'll bring it up, but it'll be very casual. They'll bring up real estate before I will. You know, it's uh, it's just, it's very organic. Um, Yeah. No, I love that. So you, back to the people that are trying to duplicate what you're doing. Um, You know, I would like to, Um, you know, if I, want to work that hard. Um, well, you, you said, you know, your numbers and, you know, you, you know, the percentage of closing Zillow versus referral, et cetera. You have your, your past clients and, and you also, um, you know, mentioned the the time that goes into having to nurture some of these people. Do you have people set up on, in a CRM like KV core on campaigns, where you're staying in constant contact with them, getting they're getting emails, you know, weekly on home searches or anything else like that. Um, or are you making most of your stuff, you know, personal phone calls? What is your what is your system and databases look like? I do everything the hard way. Um, <laughs> it seems like I don't have anything really automated. I have staff that help me with it. They basically give me my list, like call these people, and then I do a couple of things I do that I think are really powerful is. Uh, call it an EOS, which is examples of success. I give my database. Um, so I do have data, I do have databases and I have reminders when I'm supposed to call them, but I, uh, I give, I mail something to them every month. And one of them is a letter of the heart, letter of the heart. And that is probably my most powerful thing that I do. Um, and it's something about my family, something about me personally that I might be struggling with. Like I'm trying to share pain with them trying to talk to them, trying to inspire. I just, so I write out a page like about kind of just how I'm feeling about something and just giving them an update on my daughter maybe or whatever it might be. But it's, uh, I do that every other month. I give my whole database a letter of the heart, just where I'm coming from. And that I get messages all the time about that. They're like, wow, I was really touched or whatever. I did a weight loss competition once with my database. I sent a letter and said, hey, I'm, fatter than I've ever been. <laughs> and I, I want to lose weight. Do you guys want to lose it with me? Let's do a contest. 50 bucks a person, winner take all. And we did a, I did a contest with like 20 people entered. It was fun. Um, so it's a, uh, I do that. I touch them that way. Example of success is like, um, I sold this house, real estate's still looking good. And I send that out to them like a postcard. Um, so I try to touch them once a month through mail. 
I don't e- I don't do any emailing with them. It, it's just calling in the mail. But uh, I want to get the emails going because it's so easy to automate that stuff. I just haven't. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'll get emails. I think we all do. And, you know, you'll get one, you know, like on Veterans Day from a mortgage company. And you get the same one from like, you know, the branch manager and two different other, you know, loan officers. And it's so they're so impersonal and, and stuff like that, too. So that's the thing about automation is trying to keep it where, you know, they they actually feel like it's value. Um, you know, you don't want to water down your value. Your your value is super high because it's it's um, it's personal. Every time you contact somebody, there's nothing, you know like you said, automated. It's not like just some random crap that's going out like a lot of us send. Right. I make it all pretty personal. Um, and uh, another thing I add, it, I add is uh, events. So events are really powerful and it makes it easy to call people. Um, is uh, doing a big event this Saturday, inviting everybody I can. There's going to be like 100 plus people. Um, and it's, I have a photographer that's going to be there doing family portraits for people for free. We got a toy drive. I got live music, incredible food. Um, it's like award-winning food uh, from a food truck that's won some food truck wars. So I was able, I'm able to pitch that and uh, tons of raffles. I'm just making it really fun for them. Like, Hey, I'm just trying to give back to you. I really want you to come. Um, bring your family, bring your friends, please come. And then I call them like three, four times with that. <laughs> and I text them too about it. And, uh, and I mail to them with it. And that, and really, your whole purpose of mailing, calling, texting is just to make them think of you. When it comes to real estate, this is this is the face they think about. You know, that's my whole like. That's I mean, that's the, I mean, I have a deeper connection with them than that. But that that's how it works. They think of me. Anything real estate related, they think of me. I love it because you know, even me, right? So I know, I know that your business. I've I've known that your business comes from this structure. And this discipline, you know, freaking nature that you have and everything else like that, which is completely badass. What I did not know is how personal it was and and the actual value you try to bring and everything else like that. It's it's I would think that a lot of people, when you're just trying to throw a bunch of numbers up at the same, so you're just trying to grind, grind, grind. Again, he, I mean, I'm a fairly nice guy, but I mean, it seems like it could get fairly impersonal if you're just trying to hit a million people at a time. So the fact that you, uh, you know, are keeping it that personal, that's something I did not know. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty cool, man. I try to get deep with them. So what people people I like, you know, no, that's, I love it. I love it. What, uh, what have you tried? I mean, you said you're barely doing the Zillow. A thousand dollars a month is not a very big commitment on Zillow. So yeah, at that point, you're, it's just like going really. It's making up this little bit of money. It's probably causing you more. It's distracting you more from what you're doing almost with the amount of deals you're getting. Well, to- right when I'm about to cancel it, I get a decent lead. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like they know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, they're finally going to send a good one. What have you? What have you tried that hasn't worked? I mean, what are, what are some things you went, you know what, I thought this was going to work for me. It was a complete waste of my time or it was a complete waste of my money or a particular programs or lead gen things or team things. What have you done that you go, yeah, I'm not going to do that again? Uh, Realtor.com leads, I suck at. Um, you know, the way that they structure them, the way they give them to you is really hard for me to handle those because um, they're usually they're not calls. They're like a text message or a, a email and you've got to get to them. And it goes to like two or three people or something. It's just, that didn't work for me. Um, Zillow calls have worked because they call you directly. It's a, it's a hot lead on the spot. Um, but it's still been, I still don't really like them that much, but um, what else has not worked? Facebook leads are horrible. That is like the worst lead in the world to me. Um, it's probably more organic when it's in your database and you're sending stuff and someone's doing something there, but like Facebook marketplace, people that are inquiring, I felt like that is in or Facebook advertising and doing leads. Those are the coldest leads I've ever seen. Um, I've had, you'll get a hundred of them and think you're doing great. And you don't even get one of them as a really actually a good lead. I mean, it's just been, I've worked that hard because it seemed like a good way to get leads. And it's just like, I got, I spent thousands on that. That was like a complete waste of money for me. Facebook leads. <laughs> it's just horrible. 
Perfect. Perfect. So what, what advice, I mean, so as far as agents that you can, you know, obviously everybody sees what you're doing and, you know, so it's like, okay, that I could, I could do that or I could not do that. But what advice would you have for like veteran agents like myself and many agents on this call that need to get their shit together or just try to improve their, their, their production? I mean, what, what advice would you have for the vet more veteran agents? And then what advice would you have for somebody that's brand new into the business that this is obviously a very, you know, difficult time to maybe be coming into the business. Um, what advice would you have for those two different groups of people as far as growing their business right now? Well, I would, I would get your why really dialed in and make it powerful. I'd laminate it and put it in front of you. Um, maybe a picture with it. And I'd look at that every day and think about it before you start. You know, I got it. My daughter right up here. <laughs> so, and then the biggest thing when it comes to getting leads is what we all know, how many face-to-faces are you getting and how many talk-tos talk are you getting? You know, for me, I have to talk to like 20 people to get a lead. If I don't talk to 20 people, I'm not going to get a lead over time. I mean, I might get lucky, but you know, I have to do that. So if it's a, if you can't, if you don't know who to call, you make a list, call the state attorneys, like make a list of who you want to, who you want to go after and pursue. If you don't know who to call, do three uh, um, open houses a week. If you don't have listings, get, call me, do my open houses. I don't care. Um, you know, anybody, a- agents will let you do open houses if you don't have them. And uh, you just got to find a way to get in front of people and you got to find a way to call people. That's really it that is the bottom line you got to get in front of people and talk to them you gotta you gotta do it and you gotta get your why so you do it because it's not easy work it's boring and mundane and it's like stuff you got to do every day and the people that do it every day are gonna win that's uh that's that's, as they say embrace the suck yeah Uh, it sucks i don't want to wake up at four in the morning every day and get an ice bath when i'm dead tired like that is horrible. You know how that feels? I mean, it is like the most pain. I like to start my day that way because it sucks and it just makes the rest of the day easy, <laughs> you know? So it's embrace it and just, uh, you know, cause it, it is very rewarding. You know, when you, when you can pay off an employee's credit card and, uh, or they're backdated on taxes or something, you can just write that check and help them out. They'll never leave you. Yeah. And, it, and if you have that kind of income, then you can. What, uh, I mean, it, maybe maybe it's answered, maybe not, but what do you, because of the people you've had working closely with you before and other agents and that, what do you see holding most realtors back? I, a lot of them don't do the work. You know, they just don't, they don't put it in. I don't, and I think I see when I'm talking to people, they're mostly talking about the lawsuit that's going on or they're talking about how much it sucks and how bad real estate is. And guess what? You're what you're getting exactly what you're asking for, what you're talking about. So like I try to talk about how I'm going to get the deals. How am I going to go find them? You know, try to reverse your mindset. So you start thinking about how you're going to get them, not why you can't get them, why the market's so bad, why we we're all down. So it's okay. You know, I don't, I don't accept that. Like I'm going to have the best year I've ever had. I'm going to make sure of it. I'm going to find a way to do it. You know, you got to have the right mindset. I think, I think it starts with the mindset and just, how you transfer your mind thinking into um, because if you get your right mindset, then you're going to get the business because you're going to find a way to do it. You know, if you're thinking about how bad everything is, you're just going to experience that. Do you work five days a week? At least. Well, I work five days a week, but you know, I don't really count showing properties and listing appointments as work when I'm on the weekend. (laughs) I know that is work, but it just doesn't count to me. And I, um, I don't purposely make calls on the weekend except for like what comes to me, but I do listing appointments and I show properties, but that's just, that's just like fun time to me. Um, I like showing properties and a listing appointment or two on the weekends is fun. So I don't really, I work every day, but I just five days of very structured work, two days kind of loose. Do you, um, do you take any time you structure to not work? Yeah. Just, hey, this is this 
I don't, I don't work during duck games, or I don't, I don't work from two to four on Sundays, or I, you know, what is there any time that's just Steve time or family yeah. time? Or I'm a lot better about it than I used to be. You know, I used to work from when I woke up till nine o'clock at night every day, Monday through Sunday. And uh, now I, once seven o'clock hits, no matter what, like, I don't really answer my phone anymore. You know, it's like, it's, I'll call them at eight. And my morning time is pretty strict for me. And then, um, on the weekends, I mean, I do work some, but after, after seven, I just don't, I don't really do any texting or calls. I just put it down. I'm, I'm very religious about that. Um, and I think you have to be in this business, especially when you're busy. It's just like, it's so, it can be so consuming and then you live your life like that and then you get divorced and which I've done and I don't want to do that again. So it's, uh, you know, it's, I think it's super important to have balance and uh, to structure that, at least for me, it is. Hey, and not not trying to get a shameless plug here, but um, Steve actually left EXP once. I mean, I, and I, by the way, let's put, I'm going to list that underneath, uh, you know, mistakes you've made that didn't work. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I knew it right away too, <laughs> but I, I knew it would take right away. It, and it's funny too, because there was a lot of you like you said you knew it right away but at the same time your discipline and the way you wanted to run your business and everything else like that doesn't plug into everybody else's old school office stats you know of now we're all going to do the you know 9 a.m office meeting you're like no i actually i'm going to go make a freaking hundred thousand dollars so have a nice day you know i mean you your structure didn't necessarily work for other these other people's business model either no no in fact i didn't fit in at all you know, what I liked about EXP is that they just welcome you with no matter what kind of agent you are. And like they, you guys like me, you know, even though I'm a freak, <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's cool. You know, like I'm, I don't participate in a lot of things. Cause I'm just like, I can't, I got to make these calls. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of weirdo about that. Um, and it's, you accept me anyways, you know, I've always appreciated that. Whereas when I was at the other broker, it's just, I didn't feel accepted. I didn't feel, I didn't, I just didn't feel like I'd fit in at all. And then it was just, obviously the financial benefits of VXP were tremendously better, but um, the, uh, yeah, when I went over there, I knew it right away that I made a mistake, um, but I was getting, my daughter was getting a kidney transplant. And so I like, I had to go through that and get her stabilized. And then I was able to make the switch back. And I didn't even tell you guys I was coming back yet. I was like, but I, I knew I was. Um, I told you once I was like, I was literally pulling the trigger. I'm like, Jake, Jake Rockwell, I'm, I'm coming back. Click. <laughs> so, um, yeah, happy to be back. I love VXP and it's, it just fits me. I remember when you were buying the building you're in right now. It's, that's awesome. You're buying the one next to it. But uh, which, by the way, uh, EXP5 in Southern Oregon is the building that, you know, Steve owns. So, you know, my work address is his office. But um but it's funny because when you went to buy that building, you're going, you know, the amount of money I was blowing over here with this other company, I'm buying a building. I mean, you know, they're like, I need my office. He's like, I just bought a building with that amount of money I'm saving. So, you know, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a little depressing thinking about the stock that I lost. <laughs> you know, I did the math. It was like a quarter million dollars that I lost because I left. It became That's where it is now. That's how much stock I had before I left that got that went away. <laughs> so next time anybody asks you, what have you done in the business that didn't work? <laughs> yeah. That's a good, that's a good. Yeah. Um, dude, I mean, I, for, for me, I mean, you, you, you've had, you've covered, you know, the kind of stuff that I was going over. I, I imagine we have some questions out there possibly, um, you know, I, I haven't been keeping up with the chat, Jeff, if you, uh, if you know if there's anything in there or if you want to kind of like help moderate anything right now, or if you have questions. Well, I mean, it, absolutely awesome content. And I already see hands coming up and yeah, we'll ask everybody use that um, reactions button at the bottom and raise your hand. That'll be an exciting way for us to be able to pull people in. And Steve, obviously what you're doing is you found your why you're dedicated, you're doing the right stuff. And I have to say, I totally expected this call to go one direction and it went a different direction, which was awesome. I love when that happens because it always gets me so excited. I was totally anticipating you being like, I've been 
absolutely fire hosing expireds and for sale by owners and like going deep on like off market, super cold. And you're like, I'm captain relationships. And I hear it. And when I listen to you, I'm like, of course you are. It makes, I got to hear you for an hour. Who wouldn't love you? You're awesome, dude. Um, which is super cool, but you're building real connections with people. And then you're truly trying to help them. I, one thing I would love if we could just jump off with this, can we do like a sample call? Can I, can I be one of your clients? And can we just like role play for a second? Cause I want to hear Steve on the phone doing a call to Jeff who like bought a house two years ago with you and I haven't bought anything since, but we're still connected. Would you All mind? Right. No, we can try. Cool. Just show me what one of those, I don't care which call it is. It doesn't matter Monday through Friday, whichever one this is, but. We have past yeah. client from like a year ago or whatever. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So hello. Hey Jeff, Steve Thomas here. Steve, what's going on, man? Hey, man, you know, you're on my list. I love you. I haven't talked to you in a while. I just said, got to talk to you. Yeah, man, the things are good. It's it's good to hear your voice. How, how's stuff going, in, uh, you know, in, in, in your in your stuff? Oh, it's going all right. You know, real estate's different, but it's, uh, we're hanging in there. We're still slugging them out and, you know, I'm having fun still. Yeah, I, I keep hearing crazy stuff on the news. It looks like it's it's wild out there. It is, but you know, I'm getting I'm getting crazy crazy deals for people right now with investments, and just I'm just uh just having a good time doing it and trying to make the best of it. You know, there's a lot of negativity out there, and I'm just trying to trying to have fun, and keep a positive attitude about it all. That's interesting. Yeah, we were thinking we might do something at some point. You know, we only bought this a year ago, but we're um, Sally got a new new job offer, and so we're trying to kind of weigh out what we're doing. But we figured we'd wait for all the rates stuff that we keep hearing. The rates are real high or something. Yeah, well, they are, but they're right now. They're I'm getting deals for people that are like hundred thousand dollars less than what they were at a year ago, Whoa. and there's just incredible opportunities for people. But uh, wow. um, you know, it's just like the other day I put someone in escrow for it's a house that should have sold for two eighty all day, and we got it for two hundred. It's crazy, and we could wow. literally put twenty grand into it and sell it for three and a quarter. It's just unbelievable. That, man, oh man, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel the the natural draw of the conversation. I'm going to stop there. Natural draw of the conversation is just to pull in and talk about your stuff. Like on is my side, I want to, right? Because I want to hear what you're talking about. I like probably you're the down up, I probably would have brought up like, dude, do you know the equity you have in your property right now? You got 200 grand. Let's use it and go buy an investment. What do you think? Oh, yeah. And we have such a ghost connection. I can like kind of get aggressive about it without being, and I don't, I really don't care if they say yes or no, you know, right. it's, uh, but I, I'm still going to get in their face about it in a fun way. Right. You could be like that brother that's like, come on, you knucklehead, let's get a, <laughs> you know, like an investment property or something. I love that. That's great. Um, I see Joanne's hand up and I, I want, I'd love to bring her over here. Hey, Joanne. Hi there. Hey, hey. Thanks, Steve. Hi. So a um, couple questions. What time do you go to bed? Eight o'clock. Every night? Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. That'd be a big challenge for me. But the other question is, how do you keep your conversation short? Like when I get on the phone with a past client that I haven't talked to in a while, I'm really very relational and I'm an I, so I don't do all the talking, but I tend to pull out a lot of stuff about their life and their what's been going on. I mean, it's like it ends up being... I don't know. I just don't have any short conversations. And so how do you handle that? What's your advice to somebody like me? It's hard, honestly. Usually, some unless it's a person that just doesn't do long conversations, usually they're long. So it's uh, it's that's why it's an all-day event sometimes, calling that many people. And 40 calls is probably too much, honestly, for most. I, it's, I wouldn't recommend that many. But uh it's uh, it's just a number that I've always gone for. But anyways, the short conversations are not easy for me either. Yeah, they I, always go long because we get we get closer every time I talk to them. So it's like right. they just get longer and longer. Um, and I think that's an okay thing. It's a way to get even closer with them, you know. And I'm just I'm I am pretty purposeful about looking for something I can do to help them, whether it's real estate related or not, you know. And I got we you know and we're in a world where we have such great connections for people. I want them to think I'm the source for that. Right. You know, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I, I, the answer is I can't either. <laughs> They're long conversations half the time. The ideas get started. And if one goes long, it's going to be more productive anyway than a bunch of short ones possibly. Right. So just go with it. 
you want to get cl- the closer you are with people, the more referrals you're going to get. Mm. So just get close with these people, the ones you love. You know, if they're long conversations, you probably like them. So I tend, it seems like there's like five clients that I spend a lot of time with, but then none with the other two, two or 300, you know? So it's, it's like, those are the five that get all my time and attention. Yeah. I mean, I got people, I got clients that are like that, where I got probably five people, five to 10 people that I talk to every day. You know, it's like every day we talk because I get 10 deals a year from them. So it's like they're they're a big part of the business. Like that's a huge chunk for me. I get tons of referrals from them. And so I'm talking to them all the time. They're like my best friends. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Steve, how do you talk to somebody every day? I have I don't talk talk to my friends and family every day. I mean I got five to I got five people I talk to every day. I can name them off. I know everything about them. And and is there I mean, you guys go, you know, get lunch, have beers. I mean, so it's so it's 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 a relationship at this. It's and it's a referral relationship. I am I am aiming to give them more business in their business. I want to help them in their business. Like with those kind of the big my big whales. So I got about five. I am gonna make my every effort I have because I'm I'm a pretty structured guy. Obviously, I I'm I read a lot of business books. I've got you know, I'm, I'm, I can help them with their business probably. And so I try to help them. You know, I, I, I sit down with them. We talk about what they could do for their business. I try to get them employees. I try to help them with what they're doing so that I can improve their business too. And then they improve mine by referring me because they're usually in this type of business where they can refer or they have a lot of real estate to sell and buy. And I'm their agent. I love that. I remember reading um, one time it was talking about this exact thing, building relationships and then trying to build, I don't remember what book it was or where I read it, but, and then having to, you know, more or less about the whales and that, and, and who are the people that, you know, that could, that could most impact your business. If all of a sudden, you know, you were the person they were going to start referring to and everything else like that. And then, you know, you write those people down and, and then it's just like, okay. And then how would they improve your business? And you write all that down. And and then how would you improve their business or their life? And it's and that and then it literally said that's the thing that most people don't take into account is yeah. and it's like is the bringing value piece. It's just like going you know I have you know I, I got to admit I have some good referral partners that have sent me some you know a number of deals and I don't spend enough time thinking how can I help you? I have purposeful and, meetings. And that's an easy freaking phone call. How yeah. can I help you? It was an easy phone call. I literally, that's one of the reasons I call some of the VIPs. So I'll call my VIPs and I'll say like, hey, let's schedule a lunch. I have some ideas. I want us to improve each other's businesses. Let's let's like game plan how we can give each other more business. We The market's hard right now for all of us with whatever industry you're doing. Let's help each other and and grow each other. You know, let's, and so that's a, a very purposeful call on Mondays. My best guy that I have, he was, he just walked in randomly just now and was trying to come see me. I mean, I see him all the time. I it, I was like, I can't, right? you know, I would, obviously he couldn't, but um, if it wasn't for you, I probably would have dropped the call because he's like my number one person. But, you know, I'm, it's uh, it's kind of funny that, that that's how close we get, you know, you know, I've that's taken true. fishing, you know, I, one of the thing I wanted to mention was uh, that I do with my VIPs. So it's a very special group is I take them to my house. I'll, barbecue for them, cook for them. Um, I'll, I live, I bought a fixer upper on the river. It's all cool. And, uh, but we got a cool fishing hole in the back. I'll take them fishing, take them rafting. Like I try to do something really close like that and make it something that they don't usually do that gets us tight. That's pretty cool, man. Everything is just about personal. You yeah. know, and again, I was, I, you know, I don't know if that's the direction that Jeff was talking, but you know, that's the, that's the part of your business I, I don't see the grind and the and the personal thing that can how those could go together and you you obviously you're pulling it off and that's the that's actually your secret sauce because you're a freaking good dude that cares about people you work hard but I thought that was the entire secret sauce and working hard without the right heart position is just freaking hard work yeah. and it's more exhausting you probably feel better at the end of the day by having actually tried to improve people's lives. 
So yeah. I think Chandler's got his hand up. Yeah, actually, I just have a quick question. It's probably not important in the grand scheme of things, but we kind of, we got the, uh, Hey, Chad, we accidentally got you muted there. Could you try unmuting for us and repeat your question? Sorry about that, man. You got that? All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. So uh, I, I guess my, my question isn't really important in the grand scheme of things, but I'm just kind of curious. You, you've you got uh, – we, we, we've got your wake-up time and your startup routine, and I imagine that you start making calls at 8 o'clock uh, for your – for your 40 prospecting calls, but then how long does that take? And, you know, I know that you've got a lot of real estate business that happens throughout a day, so you've got to be malleable, but what does your, like, is the calls, obviously the calls are the secret sauce, uh, you know, making those relationships and all of that, but where do you make time for the rest of your stuff where you're- I try to, you know, I've, I've played with that because that's, it's hard to do. You know, real estate will take your day away like a tornado. And so it's hard to, if I don't schedule it in my schedule, like a regular listing appointment, I won't do it the way I normally do it. So I try to block out two hours, 10 to 12. And I, I eight o'clock, I'm kind of preparing for my day, getting my head right, getting it all lined up. Nine o'clock, I do a meeting with my team. We get game plan the whole thing, the whole day. And like, what, what are we doing? It's like a huddle for the day. And then 930, it begins. And I start just hammering that phone and I tell everyone to leave me the heck alone. And uh, I try to not let anybody disturb me. And I just make those calls 10 to 12. And then I let the, and then after 12, it's just real estate. It's like handling everything that's coming at you, doing appointments and you know, all that. So that's what I do. If I let it go on in the afternoon, I don't seem, it's hard to get it done. Hey, Steve, what, um, I, I know like you, you said that the, you know, your, your VIPs, you, you know, you talk to some of those guys every day. Um, what does the rotation look like as far as like past clients and, and that? I know you're calling past clients weekly, but you know, if I'm your past client from two years ago, how often am I going to get called by you? Um, every six weeks. Okay. Probably. And, and again, if I don't want to call you every six weeks, you're probably not on the list just because it's, Maybe we're not, it wasn't that good of a relationship for some reason, you know? So it's, uh, I call about 15 to 30 people every six weeks. So on, on the Thursday day. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering how often you can call somebody and still have it sound. You know, it's, it was hard at first. Honestly, it was not easy. I just did it. And then we've gotten tight enough where it just become, it's just, they know I'm calling them. <laughs> like you're going to hear from me for the rest of your life. You've checked into this hotel. You're not leaving. <laughs> you know, that's how I look at it. Like it's uh, I'm your realtor for life. And this is, you know, you're going to, I'm going to be with you forever. I'm always going to call you. Steve's like hotel California. Evidently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey John, what do you got? Hey buddy. Hey Steve. I love what you're saying. Thank you so much. Um, a couple of things I'd like, one of the things I noticed, right. Is that so many people that, work so much by referral, um, how would I say it? Some people think the people that do as much business as you do can't, because you're on the phone a lot, you're really moving fast, you can't be personal. And I'm, what I love is I'm hearing is like, you can be as focused as Steve is and still be as loving as Steve is, right? They're not mutually exclusive, which a lot of people think, right? And the other thing that you brought up that I'd love to hear more about, and I did them years ago, but I'd like to have you explain it more, is this, um, well, the what about you form and why and and explain a little bit more we used to use that i loved it um how you keep track of it when do you use it um you know is it in the initial meeting is it afterwards could you walk through and explain to people and again the power of that because i think people are asking what do you talk about well when you're looking at the what about you form there's so many things on there you've got their kids names you've got their birthdays you've got all these things there what's their favorite restaurants what are their hobbies it makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? So if you could go into that a little bit more. So yeah, and all about you form makes these conversations way easier. You're right. It's like, if you know when their kids' birthdays are, you can bring that up if it's close. You know, it's a, uh, and you can also call them on that day. Call them on the kid's birthday. Tell them happy birthday for Joseph or whatever. Um, that touches them more than their birthdays, them, their own birthday. Um, so it's uh, the all about you form just has their name, 
it has obviously um it, it'll have their birthdays all their family's names um the favorite restaurant favorite type of drink if they had to have a drink that they have um it'll have and i often we've been changing things i used to do it every six months i would just like have the team try to get gather all that information but it seems to have been coming better directly from me so i've been I've been trying to implement where on when I call these people, the all about you form is in front of me and I'm filling it out organically by just talking to them. I don't even tell them it's in front of me. I don't tell them I got this all about you form and want to fill this out. I just, I just ask them like, Oh, what's your kid's name again? You know, and I'm just writing it out. So it's like, every time I have a call that all about you forms right there. And it's just, it's such a more purposeful call. Cause I like have a goal. I want to know their kids' names, <laughs> you know? Um, and so it's a, uh, I, it's just, it's the best way to do it. I think is doing it that way where you call them organically. It's, it's tedious though, but it's hard to get into that rhythm, but with staff, it's easier, uh, but then you just call them when you have that sheet in front of you and you just fill it out organically. That's Over interesting because I was taught years ago and we were using them. It was different. I actually did it as initial intake form. Well, I did at first. So if I met with a client, you know, as a buyer rep, I'd say, Hey, this sounds strange, but we oper operate a lot like a doctor's office is that, we looked at relationships for life. We want to know more about you. Are you open to filling this out? Right. And we just get them started. Right. I mean, it's a Joe Stump thing and it's Rick Ruby and all the guys that go way back. Right. That's where Evan's success, but you're found your own vision, right. Of how it started for you and how it works. And it depends on where you go, but yeah, it made it life so much simpler for me to talk to people. I did it that way at first. And then I've, I've changed it to where it's just, it just feels more organic if I do it myself. Right. Right. And could you explain a little bit the evidence success you're using? Um, are you doing evidence success at all? Or are you strictly doing the, could you, I don't think you brought that up. Could you explain I, that? I said at the EOS, uh, evidence of success. I just do that every two months. So what Steve's got is, guys, if you heard that, is a rotation. So one month he's sending a letter from the heart. And there's four things that he's really covering, right? Steve Ford, right? One month, it's family. Next month, it's occupation. Next month, it's recreation. And next month, it's dreams. Now, he might vary on that, but those are the four things. And those are the four things he's talking to people about the most, right, Steve? What are yeah. your dreams? What's your family? What's those things? So when you ever get blocked, that's all you got to think about. Uh, tell me something about your family. What did you guys do for fun? What are your dreams? And then the evidence of success, could you explain what that looks like and how you're using it? And maybe a, a, is it a card? Could you it's walk a card? We do it. We have a place locally that prints them. And we just, uh, I have the staff print one up and it's like a, a house that I sold for, a, you know, that I want to display um, what it's sold for or whatever. And then it's just like um, maybe a little blip about what real estate's doing. And then I just send it out to the clients. It's just a way of getting in front of them and having them show that we're still selling houses and things are good. And sometimes on those, you're showing like, hey, they bought this with zero down. They didn't think they could buy. Yeah, right? exactly. You're telling a story sometimes, right, about this individual transaction that make people triggers their mind, right? Hey, I got referred by my brother-in-law or I got referred by this client I worked with before and boom. So it's triggering people. Is that kind of the thought? Exactly. Yeah. Just something that just has just something in there that was kind of a positive thing, like or uh I think we just did a triplex that we sold and we just did an eos on that like this guy got a triplex for this price and he's collecting 3800 bucks a month uh you could do it too you know something like that and i gotta tell you steve i agree with you i mean i sent the other success for years upon years sometimes we did it in our newsletter and i get so many calls about that or you know the dude's like that's my bathroom reading <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you made me cry again. My wife made me read that. I really didn't want to read it, but my wife made me read it. Right. And you're getting some of that. And that's that you're a serious driver. We know each other well, but that's where you're making a connection with people at a, at once one conversation and people don't get as much hard mail anymore. No, no, I think that's great. I think it's great. Thank you for sharing that, Steve. Yeah, thanks, John. Good to see you. Too, brother. See, Steve, we've had beverages a few times together. They're never I know. friendly coffee. And um, and the thing is, is that, I mean, I just thought you were kind of like, you know, a hard ass, smart ass. And, you know, I didn't I didn't know you were so freaking, you know, nice. But uh, but no, 
No, I mean, but I, it is cool what you're doing with your business. Um, Chad had a follow-up question to what he asked about earlier as far as, or maybe in relation to what you had just said um, and having that, um, that I forget what the form is that um, the all about you form. Um, so do you always have something out? Do you have a, do you have a file out in front of you or a form out in front of you every time you call somebody that you're taking notes and filling something out or, or do you all of a sudden just, you know, have to grab something when, when yeah. something. Papers. So I have my staff come in and they say, here every morning. So they, we got it kind of in a routine, um, but they're, I mean, I'm sure you could file it away on yourself. I'm terribly disorganized, believe it or not. I mean, it sounds like I might be organized, but I'm not. I am I am so unorganized. And so that's why I have staff to line me, keep me in line. They're like all glorified babysitters, kind of making sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Because if I get a lead or something, I'll leave on the spot and go chase it down. You know, it's just I'm a I'm a I'll if I see a squirrel, I go chase it. And so I I have my staff that manage me. What's encouraging for me is you, the volume you do, you crush it so much. And and I messaged a few people this morning saying, not even knowing to the degree that I was accurate, that what you do is duplicatable. I mean, there's other guys on this call. I cannot do what they do. I can't. I don't I don't I don't have the systems technology. It would take me forever to, to have my campaign set up the way everybody else does, everything else like that. I, I would just, I don't even like, I never even put people on real estate searches. I mean, I, I want to find properties for myself um, because otherwise it starts sending them nonsense. And then I feel like I, you know, it starts watering down my value when I reach out. But what you're doing, I mean, I, I work from yellow pads and, you know, paper databases and stuff like I can, I can do that. Which is amazing that, that I wouldn't think that the 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 guy that does as much volume as you runs a system that's actually most in aligned with what Joe Yates actually has the ability to freaking do. You know, I thought that you know I had to have like you know I had to go to MIT and work for NASA to be able to do what you were doing to put up those numbers, and it really is duplicatable for somebody that wants to put in the work. Absolutely. Yeah, mine's pretty simple. I don't really. I'm not very good. I'm not a very good tech guy, you know, so I just haven't really built a business around that. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it sucks. Everybody's going to hate this actual call because they're, they're you, everybody's going to come away with no freaking excuses. They're going to go, there is no, but I'm not good on YouTube. I don't know how to do videos. I don't, you know, I'm not good on Facebook. I, he, yeah, he didn't do any of that. He calls people up and loves on them and gets deals and he does it every freaking day religiously and Monday through Friday because Saturday and Sunday he has fun showing houses and taking listing appointments. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So that's the other thing we gotta we gotta redefine what we some of us consider fun. Um, but you know, I, I just love the what the business the way you're doing. And again, everybody walks off here just going, nah, fuck, I could excuse me, I I could actually do that. And now. It's just a question of whether or not you do. John, how many how many lunches or coffees are you doing a week that you schedule in that are mandatory for you? Well, I I do a I usually do a lunch every day with someone, but uh, for for a week at least. So at least for a week that you're breaking bread or having coffee with people. I I probably do like four to eight because I usually have dinner. I'll have dinner once. I mean I'm pretty social. With like an intimate like what i feel like is an intimate group it's kind of a big group but i you know i'm pretty close with them so i have dinner once or twice a week with someone um lunch is every day usually and uh yeah so it's like but again lunch. you're structured about that right most of the time you're thinking about who you're going to have lunch with over the next week that's usually monday monday i'm like hammering out my schedule for lunch. i usually have one on monday scheduled already but mondays i'm like i'm hammering out my week and getting that lined up and again, that's so simple, right? It's not easy, but it's simple. And I talk to people this all the time. It's like, I mean, people say, what do I need to do? I'm like, well, how many coffees and lunches? I mean, you can go to coffees and it doesn't cost a lot of money. And yep. you can drop them in in 45 minutes because it's not about having a two-hour lunch, right? It's about getting in and being front of them and being intentional for a few minutes. And again, yep. that's the thing about referrals that we're talking about is that when I hear people all the time talking to me about I have a referral business, I'm going to go, 
Well, how many days a week are you talking to your past clients? Do you know who your top 25 are? Are you having special events, just having them over to dinner to your house, having five or 10 people over for dinner once a month? Those are all simple, but they're not easy, right? And what I'm hearing you, Steve, is that people aren't hearing all these mechanics, right? X amount of calls every day. I've got my lunches scheduled. You know, if somebody calls and says, I can't go this week, you're putting them out the following week, aren't you? Well, let's see when we can get on the calendar. You know, if something changes, we can schedule it. You know, you're, you're okay, I've got these two mailers going out. They don't cost a lot of money because they're not fancy, are they? Mm-hmm. They're not four color, glossy, beautiful, I'll bet. Actually, they are. Are they? You've done them that way now. Well, they're yeah, still they're, not expensive, right? They're not bad. No, a couple hundred bucks. They're not bad. But you've got all these little pieces together that you're doing them all. And I think that's the question I hear from people is like, nobody needs it. Not everybody needs to do, has a need to do 50, 90 deals. No. Right. And that's okay. If your goal is 15 or 20, when our average price point is 400, that's still a pretty good living. The question is, what are you doing? What if you just, most people have the time to do five lunches right now. They're not that busy, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, but make sure it's with people. And what I love what you're saying is you're looking in your database. Who's already referred people to me? Who are people that have referred me already? Because they're likely to refer again. Who are whales, right? And could you explain that a little bit more again about whales? Because um, you mentioned it, but people that could potentially send somebody to you, could you walk into that a little bit more? So. A whale for me would be someone getting me like eight to 10 deals a year. That's either referrals or they're doing them with me. So they're either buying, selling with me or they are referring me. So anybody to me, if a, if I'm getting eight plus a, a year from that person, I consider them a whale. If um, And then I have a whale list that's like I'm pursuing them whale list. So what would that look like? So that's me trying to get in front of them all the time. I'm trying to get lunch. I'm trying to date them, basically sending them flowers if that's what it takes. I'm like, I'm trying to get in front of them in some way, you know. Would that be a divorce attorney, a probate attorney, attorney estate attorneys, um, maybe just a business owner, a business owner of some sort that I think has it. I like the way I'll go after somebody. You know how you get that person who's like, they might just, they might be a uh, any 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 employee out there, but they refer like crazy. Because they're just those kind of people. If I sense that, I'm going after them. I want to get close with that person because I probably like them. And I'm going to get, I am going to pursue them. I'm going to find a way to like, how do I get in front of this guy, girl, whatever. But it's a, so if I sense that, I go after them. I consider them a potential whale. Um, Yeah. And it takes a while to get even to five whales. I mean, that's a lot of deals. Um, But it's, man, it's, it's powerful in a market that sucks, <laughs> you know, like having that, having those five people and just taking care of them is like, that's a good foundation for a rough business when your business is not as, as it usually is. So it's, uh, I just going to keep doing it and let it grow. I just love the intentionality, the discipline, and then the accountability. Thank you. And most of us aren't putting up those numbers. So we might need to go get a few tuna or marlin or something and then eventually get a whale. So um, <laughs> do your VIPs, do your whales know their whales? Do your VIPs know their VIPs? Or do you, are you just are you just kinder than them? Or do you literally tell them, you know what, you're you're a VIP to me. You're why well, I tell them my business. I used to not, but now I call them and I'm like, you're my VIP. If they if I haven't if I haven't told them and they're new, <clears throat> I just tell them. Like you're on my VIP list. You're one of my favorite people in the world. So you're going to hear from me every month, no matter what, unless you tell me to stop calling you, just so you know. <laughs> and then I laugh or something and it's, they just, they actually really appreciate it. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, you're, I really like you. And you're like, I think we have a good thing. And I think I could help you with your business and you can help me with mine. I, I want to, I want us to work together. You know, it's a very intentional call. And I tell them, I, I used to not do that. But it went way, it got, the relationship got so much better when they knew I was calling them because I liked them a lot and I wanted to work with them a lot. And this, and you're actually one of my favorite people. So I'm, I'm going to be bugging you every Monday now and then. See, every single thing leads back to authenticity. Like even not filling out that form at the very front just because mm-hmm. of the fact it didn't feel 
right to you. And now the fact that you're filling it out organically and just asking questions and learning about them like you would if you and I were at lunch or something like that. You know, it's just you're, you're picking up stuff as it goes and it's more authentic. So everything, you're intentional, but you're authentic. And which, again, everybody's got to love that because, again, you you're not you're not faking it. I mean, everybody can be real. You don't have to be every single person on this call can have a ton of success being real and just freaking going to work and doing what you do. I just freaking love that, man. Thanks. Anybody else got any other questions for this uh, badass before? I don't know. He might have to make calls today still. He might have yeah. got the day off. Did you get did you take the day off on your calls or do you get it? Do you still have to make them? No, I do not get the day off. <laughs> I will be calling in while driving and I'll be calling. <laughs> I'll just be making a lot of calls throughout the day sporadically. It'll be a chaotic mess, but it's going to be all right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, this was incredible. And Steve, thank you so much for being here for everybody. Chad has one more question and then we're going to jump. Chad, what was your question? Hey, one last thing is how did you make the transition to hire? Um, once I was doing about three to five deals a month is what I, I was doing like three to five pretty religiously and uh, just feeling like I had this in, visible i couldn't get above it i was like just burst i just couldn't i didn't have too much time and or not enough time i was overwhelmed not giving good service so i brought on an executive assistant and uh, that handled managing me managing my calls managing like and they did a little escrow work but they really weren't they were like they were just managing like my calendar and my day and they went, they're doing some other like miscellaneous tasks, but they were the biggest thing is they were managing me. And that I went from three to five to six. I was like, whoa, this works. So I had another one. And then uh, I got to like eight to 12 pretty regularly. Um, and uh, so that was, that was it. Like I was doing, you know, I'd say two to three deals a month. You could, you could hire an executive assistant. Like it would be, and then you will be surprised. What will happen is you go from two to three to three to five and the service is better and you have more time for your clients because you're not scattered. Like when I'm, I'm organized when I talk to my people, I don't feel scattered at all. I'm like completely on point with them. And I talk to a lot of people a day and I'm very busy, but because of my staff, I'm very focused on them in the moment. Um, way more than I was when I was doing two to four, two to five deals a month by myself, way more. That's super cool, man. Well, obviously, one one of the things that I wrote here in the in the chat was that what you're doing is literally simple, but it's also repeatable, scalable, and affordable. And I hear so many people. Joe was mentioning this earlier, where it's like I need 15 degrees from MIT, or I need a you know a, be a digital marketing expert, or I need to you know. There's a lot of what what seems like unapproachable mountains, and this one is like pick up your phone and repeat this process. And I love that because it's not unapproachable. It's hard work and that's great. Um, but it's hard work with a monster payday. If anybody hasn't done the math on, on selling 98 deals at a $400,000 average price point, it, it pencils out okay. So well done. And I'm glad that you're taking care of that why of yours, brother. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, thank you everyone for being here today, Joe, uh, for being an incredible interviewer. That was fantastic. Such fun uh, dynamism to, to watch here. In the call and uh, Steve for sure for just sharing and uh, for caring about everyone on this call. Really appreciate you being here. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, everyone. Thanks,